You certainly know how to pick them. Give me a break, Carla. You have a client who's accused of murdering his patient in the dental office. Turns out the patient is having an affair with him, laundering money and selling drugs out of the office. Don't forget, she was into that too. Ellen, why did you take this case? Because Henry is a good friend of mine. I've known him and his wife since college. I had to help. I don't know where to go with this. I wish we had kept digging into who would want to see this woman dead. I mean, she is a drug dealer. We digged into it. Yeah, but we didn't dig enough. I mean, if she's into that world, then what else is she into and who else does she know? Wait a minute. Did you see this? He gets an annuity. From who? His father, he gets an annual annuity of 125,000 a year. So? Did you think about plan B? Plan B who? Because her, her ex, that alibi pans out. Oh, the doctor's wife. What? Think about it. What if the wife found out about the affair? She waited and planned for it. She knew that the husband was having an affair with this woman. She was laundering money and drugs out of his office. The only problem is, if she kills him, she loses the annuity and a lot of money. It's better to frame him and send him to jail. Really? Look, she has keys to his office. She knows his routine. She sneaks in and kills a woman. First of all, the police already checked her out. And trust her alibi that she was at home? Well, I know Katrina, okay? And I know she didn't kill that woman. Well, you said you knew the doctor, but it turns out he was cheating on his wife with a drug dealing, booty shaking launderer. Don't get cute. She doesn't have an alibi, Ellen. We can plan B her. Carla, Katrina didn't kill that woman. Well, whether it's true or not doesn't matter. The point is, you can sell it. At least enough to get reasonable doubt. I thought you were out of that business, Carla. Falsely accusing people of murder. That's how we got sued the last time. True. I'm just putting it out there. You say you have an innocent man going down for murder. Well, I didn't know that you'd be so fussy about how we get him acquitted. What was the statement? Home alone, kids were at school. The police did confirm the car never left the driveway. I mean, people do take buses. It's too desperate. The jury will see right through that. We are desperate, Ellen. Your boy was last seen with the victim. And he lied under oath. She was having an affair with him and selling drugs and laundering money. He is a despicable human being. No, he is not, and you do not know him. It's bad lawyering. Don't you tell me what bad lawyering is, Carla. You know, when you're ready to accuse an innocent woman of a crime, we both know she didn't commit. Do you have a better idea? Assuming this is even an option. You know, what are we to do? Call her onto the stand and ask that we treat her hostile? Well, do we have another option? We're gonna have to tell the client, and I know he's gonna say no. Which is why we don't tell him. What? He'd tip her off. We have to tell him. What, are you crazy? Rhetorical question. Do we have an obligation to tell the client our strategies? No. Or do we have an obligation to do what's in the best interest of the client? Yes. We cannot withhold information from the client, Carla. It's called malpractice. We're not withholding information. We're just not telling him that we're framing his wife for murder. We don't need this publicity. We just got sued for the same thing. He is 
my friend, Carla. He's my friend. Do you want to win? 